Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another webinar from A Place in the Sun as part of our month-long digital event. My name is Andy Bridge, and uh, we do appreciate you joining us uh, for another of these events. Today, we're going to look at three popular property buying destinations with British buyers. Uh, we're going to focus in on the Canaries, the Costa Blanca, and the Costa del Sol. And all three, three of these regions have a long-standing history in connection with British buyers. And we are going to compare, contrast, and have a look at some of the properties that are currently available in these markets. So let me introduce you to our three estate agents who, who are going to help us with that process this afternoon. And first of all, let's head over to the Canaries, specifically to Fuerteventura, to John Goldacre of Goldacre Estates. Hello, John. Good afternoon, Andy, and good afternoon, everybody. Welcome, uh, uh, welcome to this afternoon's uh, uh, hopefully interesting uh, session. Uh, my background today is from Playa Sotavento uh, that you can see in the background there. Not, not actually being photoshopped or anything like that. True picture of the beach. Goldacre Estates has been here in Fuerteventura for 20 years. I've actually lived in Fuerteventura for 25, well, 20 of those. I've lived in the Canaries for 25 years uh, in total. So we're pretty much uh, well established uh, here. We've got two offices uh, and I have round about uh, 20, uh, 20 staff working with us here, uh, looking after our clients uh, from that point of view, really. Including your son, Alex, who we're going to see on a property tour later on, bit of a family business for you? It's very much a family orientated business, yes. I mean, I, I mean, the staff that we actually have, a lot of them have been with us a long time. I mean, Anna uh, has been with us longer than my son. Anna has been with us for 17, nearly 18 years now. So we have a lot of guys that are with us that have been for a long time. They, you know, really drive through our philosophies. But yes, Alexander, my son, is uh, uh, a major driving force in the business and uh, uh, deals with a lot of clients, a lot of other things from that point of view too, yes. Okay, well, we'll come back there, John, and um, have a chat about the Canary Islands shortly. First of all, everyone out there, let me introduce you to Roy Howard from Medellin, Spain. Roy, you're in the Costa Blanca. Yeah, we have two offices in the Costa Blanca. We cover the Costa Blanca and the Costa Colina. We're a new build specialist. Um, my background today are my September heroes. This is a couple who came out during the COVID, looking to relocate uh, and bought a nice villa in Casada with a fairly good discount off it based on the current prices. Um, we cover 350 kilometers of coast and there's something like 700 new build properties along that area of the coast currently. So we've got 55 staff currently within Medland and uh, deal with about 11 nationalities I worked out the other day. I think that was 12 nationalities and 10 different languages within Medland we, we cater for. Thank you, Roy. And Mark, Mark Rawlings, your dream home. I know you have Costa Blanca, but today it's all about the Costa del Sol. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thank you, Andy. So, um, you know, I started the company 13 years ago. I moved to Spain 15 years ago with my family and um, we first of all started in the Costa del Sol. So we've had an office there for 13 years dealing with sales and property run, uh, rentals and management. So we currently manage around about 250 properties. And then also we cover the Costa Blanca region as well. So we cover the whole of the, the south coast of Spain. And how are you finding things at the moment? I know there's a bunch of challenges with quarantine restrictions, but you're innovating and uh, looking at new um, new technologies. We're doing lots. I've, I've got a client here now who um, reserved a property under what's been called a COVID contract. So it was subject to viewing. But now he's just said, listen, I, I feel that the quarantine is in place for a little while longer. So he's decided to come across and, and see the property so he can start moving things forward. Um, the interest is, is immense. It's, it's busier than it was before we went into this situation. So I think everybody's just waiting. We're still selling properties um, virtually or people are coming over and, and staying in quarantine when they get back. But certainly we're, you know, people are still focused on, on finding their dream home in Spain. And Roy, you, you referenced uh, quarantine contracts in a webinar the other day. Just uh, for the sake of today's audience, just briefly explain what's involved with one of those, would you? Yeah, the number of the developments are now offering a COVID contract where you can physically reserve the property in advance and pay a 3,000 euros or so deposit. And then you have a period of time after quarantine is list lifted to visit the property 
and decide to go ahead. It's um, the developers are doing a lot at the moment. They're doing a lot of 360 tours and we've been doing virtual tours and that because it's it's really the orientation when you go and visit a property. A lot of it is looking, seeing where it is, and that's what they're coming over and doing. You have to be careful. Like I mentioned earlier on because we did notice a developer contract the other day where the deposit was only not refundable but you could transfer it to another one of the developers properties um, the contracts you really want are the ones where it clearly says that that deposit is refundable if you arrive and don't want to buy that particular property and again as i mentioned in the previous broadcast always first and foremost give that to your lawyer or a lawyer before you pay any money over thank you roy uh, thank you, gents. So for everybody out there, if you'd like to ask our estate agents some questions today, then please click the Q&I icon uh, on your screen. That will come over to me and I will put your question as we go through this afternoon's proceedings. So, uh, John, back to the Canary Islands. Before we move specifically on to Fuerteventura, then tell us a um, little bit about the islands, uh, the, the history of the relationship with British buyers. It's always been a popular destination, I guess, for the obvious reason of um, all, all round uh, and indeed winter sun. Absolutely. I mean, this is one of the key things that we have in uh, our favour here, uh, is the all, all year round weather. And it's really quite interesting. A lot of people think that uh, uh, being the Canary Islands, that we're actually unaffordable for a lot of people, but we're actually not. I actually had <clears throat> a client the other day that said they were looking elsewhere, who said, we then realized that actually the Canary Islands were well within our uh, price bracket and that, that has actually determined that they're actually going to resume their search, uh, their search here. But yes, the British buyer has been in love with the Canary Islands for many, 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 many years. I mean, early 1900s, in fact, way before that, I mean, in 1600s, uh, uh, they weren't actually buyers, they were takers. We actually had some people... Uh, 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 try and uh, invade one of the beaches here in Fort Aventura and were beaten back by the, uh, by the locals. So uh, it's, it's quite interesting really at the end of the day. I mean, the, the, market, the market in general, as the guys are talking, are, are really, uh, uh, you know, is, is, is really immense. I mean, it's a huge market for foreign property in general, both Spain and the Canary Islands. We're made up, as you can see on the picture there, you've got Santa Cruz de Tenerife, Las Palmas, Gran Canaria, uh, uh, Fort Aventura and Lanzarote. They're the, big, uh, they're the big four. And then you've got obviously La Palma, uh, uh, um, El Hero, and uh, uh, Las Palmas really at the end of the day. So it's, it's a really interesting and diverse market uh, from, that, uh, from that point of view. People have their favorites. Um, Port of Ventura is a place that people tend to discover because it is the last of the, uh, the big islands to be really built on, to be quite frank with you. It's the second largest in, uh, uh, in land mass as, uh, as well. Um, one of the questions that was asked of me for today was the, the size of the Spanish market. It's actually quite incredible when you actually look at it uh, from that point of view. Uh, the size of the, the market of foreign sales in Spain in general is about 2.5 billion, uh, 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 sorry, 21.5 billion euros a year, uh, which is quite, uh, quite immense. The British market is worth about 4.5 billion euros a year. Now, this, this gives us a lot of uh, strength as, uh, as buyers. Uh, because to the Spanish government, I mean, just those alone, uh, the British buyer generates about 1.9 billion euros in uh, purchase taxes. So it's not a market to be ignored. And this is, this goes across all regions. So it's, it's quite an important thing. And I know some people are concerned about what's going to happen in the future with Brexit and things like that. My view is, and I think a number of my colleagues' view is that it's not going to really hurt you at all because the, the Spanish government can't turn its nose up at those sorts, of, uh, those sorts of numbers. I mean, the British market is, you know, ranges from between whatever numbers you want to look at really, but between 20 and 24% of the total marketplace, there's about 1,800 properties a month 
sold to British buyers across uh, across Spain. So it's really, uh, you know, it's really still very, very exciting. Um, Brexit or not, I think uh, that really is sort of paling into a significance for a lot of people because people are looking for lifestyle changes, that sort of uh, that sort of thing. We okay. Well, yeah, I think the uh, British have been the most uh, important buyers in Spain for uh, as many years as you, you, you care to go back in terms of uh, properties sold to non-Spanish nationals, and um, that doesn't look set to change. So, specifically in your region then, John, in Fuerteventura, when I asked you to flag up three particularly popular locations, um, you came up with El Cotillo, Coralejo, and La Caleta, which we've got on the map here. Just yeah. um, just uh, start and talk us through those three destinations and what they have to offer in terms of buying a uh, property, please. Okay. Well, firstly, if we look at uh, where you've got highlighted in red, El Cotillo, right on the, uh, the coast just there. Beautiful, beautiful area. Uh, really made up of a, an old fishing village, really, at the end of the day. It's got two, two old harbours there. Uh, one currently where it still has a lot of fishing boats in. There's a lot of fishing done from El Cotillo uh, and there's a lot of lovely fish restaurants in El Cotillo. Uh, one of the main things with regard to El Cotillo is the beautiful lagoons. It's got fabulous lagoons and, and as you can see behind me, turquoise seas like, uh, like this in some, of the, uh, in some of the lagoons there. Property, uh, there isn't that much property. You won't find villas in El Cotillo. It's mainly apartments that you'll find in, uh, uh, in that area, ranging from, you know, 120,000 euros up to about 300,000 and a little bit beyond uh, there because some of the seafront properties that are in there command very big numbers because they're very unique. It's very difficult to find uh, uh, seafront property, particularly in El Cotillo, but it's a gorgeous area, lovely white sand, uh, lovely white sand beaches from that point of view. Lovely little town. A lot of people go there for the day. You know, it's very easy traveling distance from Coralejo, as you can see, uh, as you can see there. And in fact, uh, uh, Coleta de Fusti down on the other side. So I mean, traveling distance from Coleta de Fusti to El Cotillo is about 45 minutes by, uh, by car uh, from that point of view. And, and which, which, which one of those resorts would be considered more premium or are they, are they all at a similar level with the price points that you referenced for El Cotillo? I think uh, basically, Really, if you're going to talk premium, then you're going to talk uh, Coralejo, really, at the end of the day, because it's a lot more diverse. It's a beautiful, multicultural town, uh, which is very clean, all around a sort of a bay uh, uh, in Coralejo. And Coralejo prices really will range from anywhere from 2 million euros uh, uh, to a new development that we're actually just about to launch at the end of this week, uh, some one bedroom apartments right in the center of town from, from about 94,000 euros. Uh, uh, and they're going to be really gorgeous units. I mean, there's only 38 of those, but Coralejo itself, you've got the, the natural sand dunes there and uh, they're a backdrop for many films that are made in Fortaventura, fashion shoots, that sort of uh, that sort of thing that goes on in uh, in the Junus area. Coralejo, you can buy apartments. As I say, these ones that we're launching from sort of ninety four thousand euros will range to about three hundred thousand euros for three hundred and fifty thousand euros for a seafront uh, apartment, and then you've got villas, a mixture of villas, uh, average pricing that you'll find. Uh, in the Gifond area that you can see there is around about 300 to 400,000 uh, uh, 400, euros. So, you know, you've got a diverse uh, place, beautiful uh, mixture between local and tourism. It's not just all tourism based. There's a lot of, lo lot of local people that live in Coralejo and the surrounding, uh, the surrounding areas there. Uh, no, it was on the um, it was on the TV show re recently. There's a new series running at the moment on Channel Four at four pm. I think it was on 
two weeks ago, there was a couple out looking in uh, Coralejo, which made for a, a really interesting episode. And what about uh, Caleta de Fusti then? How would that compare? Well, Caleta de Fusti, again, is another very popular uh, uh, area for buyers because of its proximity to the airport. I mean, the airport is probably about 15 minutes drive away. Uh, uh, it's just very close to where it says El Matoral there, the airport, uh, really. And Caleta de Fusti, you've got uh, two golf courses, two 18-hole golf courses. So you've got golf course properties there. A lot of nice hotels. Uh, uh, again, mixture of properties. Golf course properties will range anywhere from 250,000 euros to half a million upwards, uh, depending upon the golf course position, front line. Uh, front line will be round about the 750 euro, 750,000 euros to front line golf from that point of view. So again, diverse properties, apartments from uh, 100,000 euros more or less. Uh, they're on a in an area called Chipmunk Mountain, which is a little bit elevated. Uh, it's not quite a mountain, but it's uh, it's called Chipmunk Mountain because you have a lot of chipmunks there. Uh, but uh, again, fabulous views uh, from up there, uh, all the way across, uh, uh, all the way across uh, Caleta de Fusti itself and to the ocean. I mean, this is one of the beauties about Fortaventura. Wherever you are, you're not far from the sea. Uh, uh, a lot of the key places are based on the uh, uh, on the ocean, as you can see, and uh, you've got the benefit of beaches. And, and easy travel to everywhere. I think this is one of the main points. I mean, for us as an estate agent, we literally cover the whole of the island. We're one of the very, very few that actually cover the whole of the island. And, you know, top to bottom only really takes us an hour and 45 minutes from uh, Coralejo all the way down to Morahabali, Costa, uh, Costa Karma in the south there. So it's uh, uh, it is really quite uh, quite interesting uh, from uh, uh, from that point of view and the and the diverse areas you know I mean you can get I mean in in in, in different places on the golf course you'll probably range between 450 to 700 square meter plots uh, in Coralejo the same for a villa but just moving that little bit outside on the two places that you can see there, La Jares, La Liva, Via Verde, you're then talking of moving up to thousand square meter plots and anywhere up to a million euros plus per, uh, per property. Um, and this is one of the nice things about Fortaventura. You've got a very diverse island with very diverse uh, 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 landscape and, and property prices that can suit everybody's pocket. You're not actually stuck. And this is one of the nicest things. I mean, we've got properties that are from 65,000 uh, euros, uh, euros upwards. So it really does suit everybody's, uh, uh, everybody's pocket. We've got and do you find that um, typical buyers then are, um, you know, if you were to compare it to say the well-known regions in the south, southwest of Tenerife, so Los Cristianos, Las Americas, then, uh, a lot more laid back, uh, a sort of a more chilled atmosphere than um, than that market. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, Andy. Because there is a lot less construction in Fortaventura. It will not get over constructed because there's a lot of protection in the land areas. Uh, um, the the natural areas can never be built on Tenerife. Gran Canaria, Lanzarote are a lot more densely populated, and this is one of the nice things that drew me to Fortaventura. I literally came here for a long weekend 20 years ago. I used to live in Tenerife. Fell in love with the island, fell in love with the beaches. Uh, uh, I came for four days and covered the whole island. Uh, the internal flight system is really good. We flew in, uh, had four really stunning days here. And we've got 167 kilometers of golden sand beaches here more than any other of the islands and more than any of the, of the other islands put together. Uh, uh, and that's one of the exciting things with regard to, uh, to Fortaventura uh, for, uh, for me, is it's very, very safe. 
I mean, it's, uh, there's only 115,000 to 120,000 people that live here full time. We, we receive about 3 million visitors a year. Uh, 2019, we saw 3 million visitors. We haven't seen 3 million visitors yet this year. With regard to COVID, we're at about 811,000 so far. Uh, but uh, uh, this is one of the beauties. It is very, very spacious, very safe, and very comfortable for people. And the cost of living is really, really low. I mean, it is, it is, it is a real, you know, our VAT, for example, is only 7%. So and there's many factors that come into affecting the cost of living here. And of course, with the weather, you're not needing heating and things like that in the winter time. You've got long daylight hours. So your lights aren't going on at three o'clock in the afternoon. So, you know, for me, it is one of the most beautiful islands. And I consider myself very lucky to actually live and work uh, uh, and work in such a fabulous place, really, at the end of the day. Well, thank you for reminding us about the, uh, the nights drawing in, John. Um, that's a good job done on the Canary Islands and specifically on Fuerteventura. Uh, Roy at Medland, uh, that's the gauntlet throwdown. Let's start talking about the Costa Blanca. Um, where are we going to focus on today? You've got uh, three locations you'd like to talk about in, specifically and in going in, down into, uh, into Murcia as well. Yeah, one, one location isn't quite the Costa Glida, but from where I live near Villa Martin, I can drive to this particular location in no more than 12 to 15 minutes, and that's on the Lopagan on the Marmanor. Um, one of the things about new build properties is that you only ever, the price is often dictated to by the cost of the land, and because the cost of the land at the moment around the Marmanor is a bit cheaper compared to coming up to sort of Villa Martin and Playa Flamenca. There's right. much more value to be had in that area. We still have apartments at, at 130,000 euros new. We still have villas at less than 200,000 euros new with a pool. And that really dictates the price. The only downside, I suppose, on that area is it's incredibly flat. And don't expect any sea views because if the area is flat, um, you can't obviously get any height or elevation there. Um, but it's very popular now we're finding with uh, retirees and people coming over because they're building a lot more single level properties there now. It seems to be the trend is sending you know, single level, single story uh, villas and apartments with easy access. So that's the first sort of area. And it's still very Spanish. It's not been taken over by fish chips and uh, karaoke bars. You can still go there. Plus the activity during the winter is increasing dramatically. Whereas before you'd expect that area to really die in the winter months, there's a lot more all year round traffic now, going all the way down to areas like Los Alcatraz along the coast there. Uh, second area we're going to is back into Alicante province, which is the area around Pila de la Oradada and Torre de la Oradada. Uh, again, if you look at the two areas where predominantly I sell Properties, in fact, about the last seven or eight, have either been in Pilar or the last place we're going to in Benihoffa. We're again a single story villa there, less than 200,000 euros, and apartments or bungalows, as we would call them, which is a two story apartment block just off of the main high street there, around about 130,000 euros. The other advantage to the area, it's one of the few locations along with Benihoffa where I can honestly stay hand on heart, you can exist without having to have your own car. There's very good public transport infrastructure. And in fact, the buses that come from Alicante and Corvera airports both stop there. Um, and the only price differential there is which side of the road you are, which side of the N332. It's obviously more expensive to go beachside, although there's been some recent uh, properties launched in Torre de la Oradada, a few hundred meters from the beach, starting again about 135,000 euros. So there's still some good value to be had in that particular area, uh, both in well, terms of Well served by two areas. airports, of course. Yeah, well served by two airports with public transport from both air airports. There, we don't have the same degree of infrastructure as obviously the cost of El Sol, but the bus services are very good and the public transport and the taxi services are very good. But if you pick a location where in reality everything is close to you, there's no real need for your own transport anyway. And both so, um, Pilar and Benihoffa, which is the final place on the map, are areas which service public transport very well and have very good local facilities, whether it be health facilities or 
supermarkets and bars and restaurants, and of course, a strong international community. Uh, there is a Channel 4 programme, I'm sure some people have seen, which does very much highlight the area of Benny Hoffa, Benny Mara Harless, around that particular area. Again, where the land is cheap and therefore the property prices are very well priced. Go inland, for example, to an area like Gaya Nueva, which is just above Benny Hoffa, uh, you're talking about a three bedroom, semi detached villa there at 189,000 euros, including your own pool. So, and again, another one for just under 190, which has a, a huge underbuild on it. So, there they are able to deliver some really good quality properties. And it's only about 30 minutes from Alicante Airport. It is all about location. We talk about virtual viewing and things, but to be really honest, if I had a euro for every person that came over with a piece of paper and said to me, this is what I'm going to buy, why? And they buy something totally different. I'd be a very rich man now because they rarely end up buying the particular property they highlight and find to start with. So it's a starting point not normally driven by budget and then people are open to um, what's available within that price range? The starting point is normally driven by us doing a lot of work around the locations, to be honest. Yes, we always know the budget, we all know how much money they have and we always send them examples of properties in the region. But if, for example, we have somebody come out on a viewing trip, the first full day is spent not even looking at a property. We will spend a full day going around each of the areas and running through what is in that particular location and then start looking at the individual properties after that because location is everything and it varies so dramatically between somebody that's looking for a holiday home compared to somebody looking for an investment compared to somebody that's looking to relocate. Uh, a lot of the sales recently have been people who have been buying not to relocate now but want to get onto the property level with the, the pricing levels and move out in between a typical plan between five and six years as they reach retirement and a lot more mortgages recently we're finding a dramatic increase on the numbers of people that want mortgages these days from the uk market and we did uh, we touched on this in a separate session yesterday but um mortgage availability through spanish banks is um, something that you get involved in isn't it yeah spanish banks are very keen to loan to the international market at the moment with some very good rates between sort of 1.4 and 2% through to the age of 75 without any redemption penalties. So if you do want to pay them off early or pay chunks off earlier, it comes straight off the capital. And yeah, there's some very good rates and it's not impossible to get a, an agreement in principle even before you come to Spain. Would be my strongest advice. If you are looking at finance, if you're getting more than one and a half percent on your current investment, use somebody else's money but get an idea before you come. It doesn't cost anything of what you'd be able to loan and therefore what you'd be able to afford in Spain by getting an agreement in principle before traveling. Okay, thank you, Roy. So that's uh, Costa Blanca and down this coastline and into Murcia, Costa Calera. Mark, Mark Rawlings of Your Dream Home. We're gonna come down now to uh, the Costa del Sol. What are the locations that you want to talk to us about this afternoon, Mark? So, let me just go, and we, see, we can see the airport, um, so we can just see Malaga. I can't see it on my screen. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. So, for Malaga, Air, Malaga is our local airport. We are very privileged to be one of the only coastal airports in Spain to have a tra direct train line which comes across. So, we have a direct train line from Malaga, which goes all the way past the household names Tormolinos, Benamada, and finishes in a place called Fengarola, which for me, has golf is literally about five minutes in a taxi away. The um, Fengarola itself is expanding. Fengarola is um, there's an area called Las Lagunas, which then goes out to me has golf, and that is connecting the two areas to almost being now moving forward to the future. It will just be a suburb of Fengarola going out. Um, we are again public transport, as, as Roy says, you know, is. We have fantastic public transport, as I say, coming into the airport, from the airport to the Fengola train station. Opposite is the, the bus station, will take you out to Mijas Golf. It's here, as I say, about 15 minutes on a bus. Mijas Golf itself is, um, has two international golf courses, Los Olivos and Los Lagos. Um, famous hotel, the Hotel Biblos, which um, unfortunately closed a few years ago, but was famous for the likes of um, Lady Diana staying there and, and other celebrities. That has now been reopened. They, they redid the golf course about five years ago and put 
I think it was six million euros of investment into the golf course. And the hotel was bought by Lord Alan Sugar. Now that has been taken over by another hotel group, which is, is working on it now and, and planning to open that in spring of next year. So again, fantastic for the area. Typically a two bedroom apartment will range anywhere from 150 up to 200,000 euros and above. We have just taken from an investment fund 94 um, properties, which are starting as low as 140,000 euros. So there's some fantastic properties now available um, on, the, on the golf course itself, walking distance to bars, restaurants, supermarkets, etc. So fantastic facilities. And again, all within 10 minutes of, of the coast. So it's a great development, great area. Um, just outside Fengarolam. We're then moving down further around to a place called Estepona, so the, on the west side of Marbella, um, which again, Estepona over the, the last few years has really changed and, and has really come to life. Um, again, lots of um, new build properties happened there 15, 16 years ago. Lots of championship golf courses. And we've got a, a development which we're working with called um, Donna Lufia which is about five minutes from uh, Estepona port, fantastic port in Estepona. Estepona is a, a working Spanish town, um, but a, a great, lots of nice, uh, the beach is very flat and very deep. Um, there's a nice marina in there. So the Donaloo Fear is literally five minutes inland from there, um, surrounded by, um, again, fantastic golf courses. And again, we have some incredible properties there, ranging from 129,000 euros. Um, going up to 250, I think, for the for the three-bedroom duplex penthouses, great sea views and, and golf views, etc. And then finally, we come a little bit further around to um, the Puerta de la Quesa. Um, the Puerta de la Quesa is again around 10 minutes further down towards Gibraltar. And again, we've still got some fantastic. These are the areas that was built on 18 years ago. And really. Um, a, came to life back then. There was, there was very uh, little amount of new builds and properties around there. So there's some great new developments coming along down there also. But again, moving that little bit further away from the airport, you can get properties for as little as 100,000 euros for a two bedroom, two bathroom apartment. You also then have the option to fly into Gibraltar. So Gibraltar is uh, 20 minutes away, 50, 30 minutes away. So a lot of people choose to fly into Gibraltar and then uh, come which is services at the end of the, the, the coastline. What specifically is happening with prices at the moment then, Mark? We've got a few questions in. Uh, let's cover off some of those now. Um, uh, yeah, quite, quite a number touching on the um, quarantine situation and whether there's an adverse impact on, on prices. Well, adverse for the developer, not so adverse for the buyer, I guess, if they were going down. But is that actually happening in, uh, in reality? I disagree. I don't think it is happening. We're certainly not seeing it. You know, we sell on average around between 250 and 300 properties a year. We're still selling now. And prices are holding their own. Yes, you may get a developer who has a, a house that is ready. It's key ready now because they've continued to build and they're looking at, they want to get it sold quickly. So they may offer some incentives. You know, typically on different coasts, um, a lot of things are, are, are extras. So, you know, particularly on the Costa Blanca, you have to pay for things like white goods apart. You have to pay place things like air conditioning apart. And the Costa del Sol, we don't have that. Um, everything is, tends to be included. But the, they may be giving some incentives as far as furniture packs or, you know, a, a voucher towards furniture. But they're certainly not reducing the prices on, on the Costa del Sol, that is a fact. You know, it's, they're sticking firm. We do a lot with investment funds. So a lot of properties in, from the, the, the crisis was bought by investment funds. You know, we have got one particular investment fund. Their target is 66 million euros a month of sales. And they're currently achieving still around about 45 million. Um, they've put in place things like a COVID contract. And again, they're giving some small incentives depending on the price of the property, maybe something to help with the legal costs or something to help with small furniture packages and again, we're certainly not uh, the the low things that are priced accordingly and, and rightly to sell is still selling and, and, and is not going to change in the price. Again, on the resale market, we do a lot of resales. You know, you may get the odd vendor who is, you know, in a, in a position 
they, they, they really want to sell. But that's for, we've got one today. We've just taken on a property. The guy's dropped it 30,000 euros. He's had to move back to, to the UK for health issues. And he wants to sell it. So he's motivated to sell it. But that was, that's nothing to do with the current situation. Which area, we have a question in, so if you were prepared to be sort of 25, 30 minutes inland, either on the Costa Blanca or the Costa del Sol, which, which of those costas do you think, I mean, I know they're, big, they're, they're big old places, but which of those costas would represent best value, uh, a question in that we've had? I think as Roy just touched on, for me, certainly in this as a company, you have to start with a budget. So whether that's 50,000 euros or whether that's 1,000 euros, you have to start with a budget. Within that budget, then people have in their mindset what they're looking for. And it's, it's our job to say, okay, fine, you've got a budget of 100,000 euros and you want to be within 15 minutes of Malaga Airport, then you're going to struggle to get anything more than a studio or maybe a one bedroom apartment walking distance to amenities in the coast. If you take that inland to say places like Halloween El Grande or Cohen and places like that, you may get a small townhouse in a, in a Spanish village. Um, like on, on both coasts, it's very, well, even on the islands, it's very dependent on its location. It is location. We have to then say, I had an email yesterday, I was talking to Katrina about it, and the, the lady was very specific on what she wanted. She got a very, very limited budget, but she wanted everything. She wanted public transport and different things. So that's for us to say, listen, really, you've got one choice. You know, that's the only option you've got um, for our experience and, and our knowledge of the coastlines. James Mitchell is uh, weighing up both costs as well, specifically inland Malaga or inland Alicante, um, specifically asking about insights on living costs, differences in living costs. I guess the living costs would be, would be pretty similar really, but um, it would come down to your purchase costs, wouldn't it? Exactly the same. The only difference is if you're buying within the Alicante region, you will pay 10% purchase tax, whereas in, in Andalusia, you will pay 8%. But then if you move down to Mercer, you'll only pay 8%. Living costs, if you're going to go to a local supermarket, is exactly the same. Your, your monthly outgoings, your electricity, your rates will actually will be exactly the same. And it depends when it comes to value for money. There's with the two areas, depending on where you go. Once you start getting half an hour inland, there's great value on both sides and both coastlines. Okay, and Roy, we've got a couple of questions in on tax and the tax period in Spain. When does that run from and to, Roy? Uh, the Spanish tax year is standard calendar, January through December. And would you know if you are able to offset the losses from one rental period into the next? Is that something that you would you would the, know about? Don't forget, there is an op there is a chance that the um, money you can claim back on your rentals may change in January given that at the moment you can offset all your expenditure against your income. Um, after Brexit, there may be a chance you can't do that. Therefore, it becomes an irrelevant question because you can't expense anything. You may not expense the same amount against your rental income. And somebody who's, uh, well, Glynis, Glynis Williams, who's looking to, uh, to relocate and looking to work, uh, a tradesman um, is uh, how she describes a business. Where do you think would be a good area to go if you were looking to, um, to carry on working as a tradesperson? It depends what, tr what type of trade they're in, obviously, because that would dictate. But anywhere where there is a high percentage of international residents, for example, the area I live in, there's a very high percentage of English people offer trade services because particularly people tend to like to buy from their same nation. So around this way, we've got English plumbers, builders, electricians, pool builders, you name it, we've got English tradespeople who sort of cover the Torrevieja, Orohuela Costa, um, and the same in the north. Anywhere where there is a high degree of international people, especially if you can't speak the language, there is always opportunities for tradesmen. However, one rider uh, don't expect to receive the same sort of money necessarily that you, that you receive in the UK for the trade. You know, the tradespeople earn less because the cost of living is less. The materials here cost less than the UK. Therefore, the amount of money that tradespeople charge is typically less. And could you help uh, Bill O'Brien? I know you don't sell down on the Costa de la Luz, but what, what sort of overview would you give of give that area, Roy? I know it's um, a lesser known Costa with British buyers, but there's some interest levels down there. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a great deal of new build going on down there. And again, it's, I'll be honest, Andy, apart from knowing it's the windy coast, I really don't know that much about it. Okay. And John, uh, Rita Rye has been listening. And uh, still, even though we've been talking about Ferro Tuerto Ventura, he's keen on buying a property in, uh, in Los Cristianos, Las Americas. Um, one or two bed. I know it's not, it's not your market specifically. I mean, she's asking which area is better. I mean, I guess it's just get over there, spend some time there and work out what your, your personal preference is. That's what you would recommend, would you, John? I used to live, I used to live in Tenerife, so obviously I, I know the areas very, very well. And I've got some very good colleagues over there who we work with. So, I mean, if you want help and advice, we can, we can do that. But really with Las Americas and Los Cristianos, Today, I mean, there used to be gaps between them, but today they've actually grown together uh, very much. So there is very little difference between them. Obviously, it depends on area then in terms of price. So it really comes down to budget that's available. And again, working with a good estate agent, they will guide you on the, the areas for your budget. As uh, Mark and Roy has already said, I think these things are the most important thing. It's really working with your agent and trusting what your agent is doing with you and uh, putting your cards on the table because if they understand everything about what you're trying to achieve, budget levels, that's the easiest way to be able to, uh, uh, to guide somebody. I always say, as estate agents, we can never force you to buy a property. All we can do is actually give you best advice and then you're making the decisions on the advice that we, uh, that we all give really. We have a question in from uh, Sumya Barath, who's asking about maintenance fees. Um, Roy, would you like to take this one? Uh, I mean, they're asking about a, a two-bed apartment, but maybe just start with the sort of the overview of what's involved in community fees in buying a property in Spain, because that's a concept that might be alien to some uh, to some British buyers. Yeah, there, there are typically three lots of fees or charges you would pay on any property. Uh, depending if it's an independent, if it's an independent villa, there are no community fees. But if you're looking at a typical two-bedroom apartment, the first thing you have are the community fees. That's the fees you pay every month, quarter, or year for the maintenance of your swimming pool, of your gardens, of the sweeping the the lifts, uh, sweeping the uh, entries and paths, etc. Uh, and that is normally controlled by a group. You have a community of owners that control that pricing. Prices range there, but the normal is around about 60 euros a month for a pretty average two bedroom property in the Costa Blanca area. The second fee is for your rates or your IBI or SUMA as we know it. That's an annual fee you pay to the town hall. And that's for them to come and collect the rubbish for your policing, for your local facilities, etc. And again, pretty much an average there is around about 300 euros a year. I have to say that again, because it isn't 300 euros a month. The third thing that non-residents have to pay is they have to pay an annual non-residence tax on their assets in Spain. Uh, again, typically a couple of hundred to 300 euros a year. It's very important to do that declaration. It's very important to pay your non-residence tax. It's a very easy process and it can often be more expensive in additional charges if you don't pay that compared to if you actually do pay it. So you do need a reasonable accountant or an understanding of the system make sure that you pay your non-residence tax because you then come to sell the property. The way it works in Spain is that they will check the debts against the individual property very carefully. And if there are debts, etc., on residence tax or community fees or rates, they will pick them up and you will have to pay them. You allow about between 1,000 and 1,100 euros a year. You should be able to cover all of your annual fees plus the standing charges for your water and electricity. Okay, thank you, Roy. John, let's um, let's get inside some properties. You have one you'd like to show us today. Tell us a little bit about this one over in Origamare. Well, Origamare is basically uh, midway between Coralejo and uh, El Cotillo, uh, out on the west coast there, two of the places that we were talking about earlier. This is a whole new area. There is uh, approximately 700, uh, 700 properties there that are already built. There is a hotel that is up and running, uh, uh, run by Pierre Vacants, who actually have about 350 of the units. And as Mark was talking earlier, this was bought by an investment fund 
uh, and is selling off 350 of those uh, three of those 350 of those units uh, at, the, at this present moment in time. So they're a mixture of one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom uh, villas, all with front and rear gardens, right down very close to the coast. Uh, it's got a water park on site, and you'll see from the video in a second some of those uh, shots in the in behind us here. We can see the one of the shots of the uh, uh, the wave pool there. It's not got a wave in it at the moment, but uh, it's uh, all part of the water park there and part of the hotel. So it's a really, really lovely area. The prices range from basically about 80,000 80, euros for a one bedroom, uh, for a one bedroom villa, uh, from 124,000 euros in round figures for a two bedroom, two bathroom villa and uh, from 152,000 from a, for a three bedroom, uh, two bathroom villa. So very, very spacious properties, very unique, surrounded by absolutely outstanding views really at the end of the day. So I mean, they're, they're really exciting product to have and, and, and an opportunity for people in Fort Aventura today to buy at some extremely, extremely great prices. Okay. Let's take a look. This is the two bed at 124,000 euros. As dream homes go, they're rarely this complete and this affordable. Fuerteventura, a year-round sun-soaked paradise in the Canary Islands, is just four hours flight from most of Europe and the UK. The scenery is breathtaking and the environment exhilarating. The island is a protected nature reserve with vast beaches and countryside. Many Britons have already relocated to Fuerteventura or invested in property here. Why? Because it's beautiful, achievable and safe. A largely undiscovered gem concealed within the north coast is Mahanicho. To one side, a calm cove for all the family. To the other, a thrilling surf spot for the adventurous. A short distance from the beach sits the recently renovated development of Origo Mare. It has its own premium hotel, water park, shopping areas, and a fantastic range of homes ready to move into. Let's take a look at the medium-sized two-bedroom variant with Alex. Welcome to Oregon Mare, in between Coralejo and El Cotillo, one of the best places to be. Let me show you inside. Front and back garden with the side leading towards the back garden, two bedrooms, two bathrooms, and top floor roof terrace as well. Here's a great little area for you to be having some outside dining there. You can cover this pergola over, and then of course you've got all this greenery around you, which is really, really nice. We walk into the nice open plan, lounge and kitchen area. In this case, this is the show house. These properties actually come unfurnished, but with a fully fitted kitchen inside. We have nice worktop surfaces there, a hob, extractor, basin, and of course, all your cupboard space. If you want the dining table inside or outside, there's space either way. Lounge area here, again, nice open space, plenty of furniture, and still a lot of space to actually walk around as well. On this lower level, we have one bedroom and one bathroom. Really, really nice size. Obviously comes with a bath, wash hand basin, and everything else that comes with it. Through here, we have the lower bedroom. Nice big built-in wardrobes there, and big patio doors that actually open up onto the back garden area as well. These properties are fantastic for living, rentals, your own personal holidays, and you have a nice separation if you're here with the family as well. Kids can be downstairs, and of course, adults upstairs. You'll see there's windows throughout in every single part of the property, even the staircase here. Upstairs, we have, again, a nice big bathroom, and it's very rare that you'll find two beds, two baths. So this is where Regal Mar is a little bit special in that sense. Coming into here, which is the master bedroom, again, double windows through there, more patio doors here, and a triple wardrobe as well. So really, really spacious, open master bedroom. And what you do have here is you open up 
onto your private terrace. And again, from this terrace, you have such open views all the way to the surrounding mountains. All in all, for the space that you get, best value for money on the island. These wonderful homes. Nice job there, thank you, Alex. And um, let's head over from Fuerteventura then to the Costa Blanca. Roy, what have you, uh, do you want to talk us through this property that you have um, available at the moment, please? Yeah, we, we obviously did the walk through on the villas the other day, so I've gone in a different route this one, and we're going to have a look at a, um, what, what in Spain is called a bungalow. A bungalow in Spain is confusing. A bungalow is actually a, two-story apartment block with a doesn't look, with a ground floor with a garden and a top floor with a roof solarium. And these properties in the area of Mil Palmeiras. That's the wrong one, by the way, Andy. What's that, sorry? Oh, That's I do one. That's a villa in Casada, mate. Sorry. So, yeah, we're talking bungalows. So we're talking ground apartment with a ground floor, first floor with a roof solarium in the area of Mil Palmeiras. Mil Palmeiras is almost on the border in between Alicante and Murcia. So you have the benefits of either going to the Mediterranean or alternatively you can travel down to the Marmara. And it's only about a 10 minute drive from Lasagna Boulevard. Um, these properties are literally a few hundred meters from the beach. And Mil Palmeiras Beach is known as being one of the best beaches in Spain. If you look at the reviews, it's what we call a blue flag beach. And it's one of, re reviewed as being one of the best beaches in the area of Spain. Um, these properties start at 150, so you always pay more a premium for a top floor because what the top floor have, as you see from the video, is a huge roof solarium. The ground floors will have a garden. So in reality, it's about 100, it will be 150,000 euros for a ground floor, 170 for the top floor. Again, they are key ready. And again, we have some special offers where we're including the white goods and the air conditioning in the price. It's still not the one, Andy. No, um, so we seem to have a wrong, uh, a wrong link there. Let's see if we can uh, pull, that one, pull that one up for you. Uh, just tell us a little about the one that we do have on screen then, Roy. Uh, that is a, and let me check very quickly. This is a three bedroom, two bathroom townhouse in the area of Ciudad Casada, the garden city or the garden town as it's known. Um, actually built by the main constructor in that area who built most of the town. It's actually the Casada family who, who run developer there. This is one of their properties. Again, key ready. Uh, unusual property because it has an extremely large basement as well. So uh, the basement can actually become a completely self-contained apartment in its own right as well. Oh, that's right. That's one of the ones we looked at yesterday, which people could catch up on our recording, which will be on the A Place in the Sun digital uh, website under our webinar program. So let's see if we can get you the right one up here, Roy. Uh, by the way, Medland do have their own YouTube channel. We shoot all our own videos. Nothing is, is that's better. Nothing is canned and everything is our own work. So you'll see the drone shots and everything and what we actually do when we take on a project. So here we come coming over the complex. The complex is also a mixture. They do have some higher rise apartments there as well. So there are some apartments there which are in a nine story block looking out over the sea. So they have fantastic sea views. And this is the actual bungalow complex. So you can see the ground floor with the garden, the top floor there with the roof solarium as we zoom in. And then all of the properties have their own parking. And again, on new build properties, one of the biggest advantages remains insulation. Uh, we work in terms of EPC standards now, energy performance dedication. You do not hear the person above and below in a new build property because the wall and window insulation, which is designed both to keep sound out and also to keep the heat of the day out. Pretty much uh, open plan design, um, my own and we, we do modify these as well for people. My own modification on this one would be to change the kitchen around and move the hobby around and have a breakfast bar rather than necessarily having the dining table internally because you've got so much outside space for eating. But again, this will be two bedroom, two bathroom, and it can be purchased either fully furnished or we can assist in terms of after sales to furnish the property for you. 
of what this is, is this property, Roy? This is 150,000 for a ground floor and 170,000 for a top floor. Now the top floor has the, the benefit of, I think it's about 72 square meter roof solarium. Something you don't see very often when they furnished it is they've actually put bunk, bunk beds in. Again, is is not, but very nice looking bunk beds, not your sort of the ones I remember from when I was a kid with the steel frames or anything. They're actually, they're actually pretty well put in on this particular one. Uh, this is actually, I believe, the three bedroom version we're looking at here, not the two bedroom. You can see a nice that's community. What, that's area. what you term a, a key ready uh, sale then for somebody, absolutely, is that right? Absolutely, absolutely a key ready property. Uh, community fees on here, you're going to be looking at about 40 to 50 euros a month. That's what we were talking about earlier on in terms of the gardens and the terraces and everything. And there's your roof solarium. You know, this becomes a real extension of your living space because not only do they include all the necessary plumbing and everything for a summer kitchen, but also they pre-strengthen the roof if you like a jacuzzi up there as well. But yeah, these are properties that are pretty much ready now. And again, it's community fee wise, only about 45 euros a month. With a bit of modern art there. The breeze blowing a bit, but we are literally only a couple of hundred meters away from the beach at Milpomeris. And if anybody would like to do a Google search on Milpomeris Beach, I'm sure they can get a lot more photographs and information of the area. Uh, the main street in Milpomeris is actually full of restaurants and uh, various bars, etc. But the best one is the um, the Pirata, which is the uh, beach bar there, which do Northern Soul nights, believe it or not. It's owned by Spanish people, but for some wow. reason, this guy's into Northern Soul, and they will even pick you up by minibus to take you to their Northern Soul nights. And there's your view out over the sea. Fantastic. Thank you, Roy. So just to uh, clear up the confusion with the earlier video, that's Mil Palmeiras, two bed, two bathroom, bungalow, uh, Roy, at 100 and... Starting at 150,000. Great. Mark, take us over to the... Costa del Sol, I think we have your dulcet tones walking us around this property. Tell us, uh, where's this one, first of all? So this is based just outside Estepona, so it's about five minute drive down to Estepona, surrounded by the golf course. Um, fantastic development, which has been a hidden gem for the last 10, it was built around 10, 13 years ago, and is now being sold by an investment fund. It's been totally refurbished, never been lived in, so it's, it's brand new and now being sold and with prices starting as little as 129,000, I believe now. So this one, uh, well, let's, uh, let's have a wander around this one with your good self. Hi, welcome to this is um, Donna Lufia, located in Estepona, just outside Estepona. These fantastic apartments, um, two bedrooms, and also three bedroom apartments here. This is the show apartment. So we can see it with some furniture in. Great finishes, cream marble, really nice size uh, lounge and dining area. Leading out to the terrace. Come back to the terrace in a moment. Nice gallery style kitchen. A um, laundry area, space for the washing machine, a boiler, etc. Bedroom property. And two bathrooms. This is the guest bathroom. And the guest bedroom, a nice big doubles, uh, double bedroom. With built-in wardrobes. Again, you can see the qualities of wardrobes have the chest of drawers built into them. Air conditioning installed. And then through to the master bedroom. The master bedroom is really lovely. Again, lots of wardrobe space. Jacuzzi bath. And go 
again through to the master bedroom with the terrace off the master bedroom. And let's have a good, take a look at the terrace outside. Great situation, this is, um, as I say, just located just outside Estepona. Fantastic size terrace. This is terrace is around about 30 square meters. Fantastic views. Down to the golf course and the lake. This is a ground floor property, so we don't get to see the, the sea from here, but we get to see the, there's the swimming pool there. And as I say, fantastic views of the golf course. This is just one of the pool areas here located in the development. Beautiful pools. Again, with fantastic views towards the golf. And I think you've been doing these sorts of virtual tours with, with clients then, Mark, is that right? You'd um, drive up somewhere and uh, walk around with your phone and directly show the client the area around the property? Yeah, I think Johnny and his team are still going to be, um, we'll have a job, but we can, uh, we're certainly doing our own videos and just trying to help people to, again, to sort of almost, okay, people saying to us, how far is it to the walk to the swimming pool and we're walking down there physically or how far is it to um, the bars and restaurants, etc. So we're very much doing it very real and, and yeah, we're, we're not professional videos we're not Steven Spielberg, let's put it that way, but it's about getting people actually inside the properties. So for information on any of these properties we've showcased today, you can head on over to our event website, a place in the sun digital.co.uk. That's where we are all month. This is where you've booked up for your webinars. And here you can meet our exhibitors. And if you come down to the Spain section, you can make contact there with Medland, Spain, with your dream home, and also with Goldacre Estates. So please do um, get in touch if you have questions for uh, for any of the guys who've been been with us today. Um, we'll uh, we'll just do a quick round robin of you all. Why don't you give out some direct contact details as well, John? Uh, what's your email address, John? My email address is very simple, john at goldacreestates.com. And our website is the same, goldacreestates.com. So it's very, very simple to find. Put us in the search engine and we should come out somewhere there. <laughs> okay, and uh, yourself, Roy? Uh, it's roy.howitt at medlandspain.com. There is a specific UK website, which is medlandspain.co.uk and a default which is info at medlandspain.uk will also get to me as well if you want an easier web address than remembering the name info at medlandspain.co.uk and mark um mark at yourdreamhome.es um i've lived in various different regions of spain so happy to answer any questions and help people um and always available good well thank you all for your time uh we have a, a whole slew of questions in around Brexit and residency. Uh, we don't have time for that today. It was specifically about different regions and different property types. Do head on over though to a place in the sun digital.co.uk. On the hub webinars at the bottom of the page is all the recordings of all the sessions that have taken place so far. We had a fantastic buying in Spain property masterclass uh, a week ago last Sunday. There were seven different sessions there. Uh, specifically on mortgage availability, on residency, on the purchase process, and all sorts of uh, facets related to buying and owning a property in Spain. Indeed, even relocating to Spain and what you need to know. So uh, today was all about the regions, Costa Blanca, Costa del Sol, Canaries, specifically Fuerteventura. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Uh, thank you to our audience for logging on today. It's uh, a lovely sort of 26, 28 degrees in the UK today. Unfortunately, it won't be tomorrow, whereas it probably will still be a lovely balmy temperature with you, uh, with you chaps tomorrow. So uh, thanks for your time. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Goodbye from me and goodbye from our panel. Goodbye, thanks guys. Everybody. Bye. Bye.